We're alive. public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement, but a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. And there is a link at the top of the agenda if you would like to submit your public input. All right, currently there is no public input. Okay, we'll check it again later. Um, do you think do you want to move the students up to now? Or we can do the minutes first okay. and then move them right up. Okay. Um, so the minutes, did we end up getting a revised? You did. So they're looking at it right now. I apologize for the high street. So they mix up. <laughs> Delayed. Um, but if you want to take some time and look at them, they are up. So they're not the ones that Jen sent us? Well, they are. So if you look at them, they're all been updated. True confessions, I think the old minutes. I just do it. And sometimes you lose a few things, or you add a few things, or you forget. Well, things most, things of it, most of it was not familiar to me, right. so I think it was the 20th. Yeah, but then yeah, right. yeah. So it was just I had contributed in that. <laughs> Had a moment. Sorry about that. Anyone have any changes? Yet? No? I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes on page 20. I'll second it. Uh, so all, I have to abstain because I was not there. And I guess it's no, Maria, you were also not there, but right. it sounds like everyone else was. Mm -hmm. So everyone else in favor? Is anybody is um or any board members? Travis, Travis is up there. Travis, Travis. okay. He's got a thumbs up. So who we're missing? Rebecca. 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 I think that's it. Okay. Yep. Just Rebecca. Okay. Um, so we are gonna move um, the student council presentation up so that they don't have to sit through the entire board meeting. I mean, you guys are welcome to, but it, um, we'll move you up in the agenda. <laughs> so this is our Noble Online Learning Academy Student Council. So we have Mrs. Dumont who is here with them. So good evening. If you want to just do some quick introductions and then we just, I, you have a lot to share. Sure, um, my name like, um, Ms. Bove said is Bridget Dumont and I work with our Online Learning Academy or NOLA. Um, the, uh, our NOLA is comprised of, of students in classes grades K through five. We have 14 classes and um, we have selected teachers nominated two students from each of their classes grades three, four and five. So I have with me here one representative each of, from each of our fifth grade classes. Aria Littlefield, Anna Dupuy, and Riley Murphy. Um, I'm the advisor of the student council with Mrs. Karen Garish, who is a computer teacher in our district and has been um, a great help to the, our online academy this year. So our student council actually came about uh, because of the work of Anna Dupuy. And so she's gonna talk a little bit about that. Our, um, our goals really are to promote leadership skills in these young students, to create community, in these unusual remote times and also to provide some service for our local communities. So Anna, if you want to unmute and talk about your your experiences and then I'll share a few pictures related to what Anna's talking about. Okay, um, hello. 
Hi, my name is Anna Dupuy, and I spearheaded the Noble Online Learning Academy Student Council with the help and support of Ms. Whitehead and Mrs. Dumont. I started the NOLA Student Council so that even in this COVID-19 pandemic, we could still be connected in a time when staying connected was more important than ever. I also wanted NOLA students to have the opportunity to be leaders in their school and community so that they will be able to have a say in their education. One of the first things we did as a student council was a macaroni and cheese and spaghetti or spoon drive for Footprints Food Pantry, and it was a huge success. I had already started a food drive on my own during the holidays, but I quickly realized that food needs are not only needed during the holidays. So I approached Mrs. Dumont with the idea of continuing it, and she accepted. During packet pickups, Mrs. Whitehead's NOLA students, as well as other NOLA classes, dropped off boxes of mac and cheese and spaghetti. In the end, we managed to collect a total of 194 boxes of mac and cheese, 126 cans of SpaghettiOs, and $377 in monetary donations. That was just for our very first community service. Mrs. Dumont, Mrs. Dumont met us at the food pantry when we delivered the items, and that was really the beginning of something very special. In addition to our other community services that the NOLA Student Council did, we held a second mac and cheese food drive that split the donations to both the food pantry as well as our own MS8060 back to back program. When the school year began and the world was so uncertain, our NOLA students and teachers came together and persevered. We made lemonade out of lemons and managed to stay connected while helping our community. I'm very proud of all of us for achieving this, especially during such a historic time. It has taught me that anything is really possible. Thank you, Mrs. Whitehead and Mrs. Dumont for your support and believing in us. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, you're muted, Bridget. We'll give you a chance to answer or to ask questions of these young ladies um, at the end of their sharing, but let me show you a couple of pictures of, um, of our food drive. So Anna talked about getting started. And this is Anna and I um, with the director of the Footprints Food Pantry. And it was a really a phenomenal collection of macaroni and cheese and spaghettios. And they have a fill the shelf program and we filled the shelf for them. And then we collected, a, this is just two loads of food that we gave to the um, MS8060 backpack program. And I know Anna's family took a separate load and we had some teachers make direct drop offs too. And following that, Mr. Elwell from the Mary Heard Academy came and talked to us about the impact of the backpack program. And it was a really great opportunity for um, the students to ask him questions and really feel the impact of their of their work. So next, Riley's going to talk a little bit about what the student council responsibilities were and another one of our service projects. So Riley, if you want to unmute and go ahead. Okay. Hi, my name is Riley Murphy, and I'm going to be talking about one of our donations that we have done as a student council and what it's like to be a part of the student council. Being a part of the student council is amazing because we get to organize theme days, donations, and plenty of other things. We, met, we meet as a student council every Wednesday, and we normally play a fun game or do something fun at the beginning of each of our meetings. After we play or do something fun, we start organizing a new donation or a new theme day that we are planning to do. We have done two donations that I'm going to be talking about, the Animal Welfare Society. We decided to donate to this pet shelter because a lot of pet shelters need more pet foods and pet food. We got a lot of donations for the Animal Welfare Society and we collected animal toys, specifically for dogs and cats mostly, and we also collected pet food. The Animal Welfare Society was very happy when we donated to them, and the student council got to meet with one of the head owners of the animal shelter. That is one of the donations we've done. Thank you. Oh, you're muted again. Bridget, you're muted. <laughs> Can you see my mouth moving in my... <laughs> oh, I swear. Anyway, I, I don't... There's not a meeting I attend that that doesn't come up at least once with one of us. Um, so this is a poster actually that Riley made to share with classes about our Animal Welfare Society project. And there's a cart full of 
products that we collected. And so, um, like Riley said, they were thrilled that we would think of them and had an ex a nice exchange with them. Um, the students really expressed strong feelings about who we donated to. When we talked about um, donating to animals, we talked about our, our local um, cat shelter, but the, the students had said, well, what about the dogs? So they cared about the dogs too. And so we acted on that. This is just another picture of a, um, a meeting we have. And so um, the students did a really good job of really sharing their ideas and listening to each other ideas. And we did that through chat and polls and commenting and small groups. It was a really good um, collaborative experience for all of us. Uh, another responsibility they had was communicating to their classes about what was upcoming. And so they all took a turn to make a poster about our various um, activities and um, service projects. Aria is going to talk a little bit more about our theme days in our Tri-Council Cup. So Aria, I'll stop presenting and you can unmute and take the stage. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dupont. Hi, I'm Ari Littlefield, and I'm going to be talking about our theme days. The theme days help connect us across all of the grades. There were a few theme days where we did this friendly competition that involved our Tri-Council Cup. Our Tri-Council Cup was an online trophy that student council made to recognize the most participa participation. The trophy made classes want to participate a lot more because they knew that if their class got the most students participating, they would win the trophy. We had many different theme days, including Earth Day, Spring Day, Red and Green Day, St. Patrick's Day, Twin Day, Wacky Hair Day, VU Day, Teacher Appreciation Day, and many more. One of the fun things we got to do for, for theme days was virtually visit the younger classes. So what we did was some of the students from the student council went into some of the younger classes to, to ask how many students participated. In that theme day, so we could announce which class had the most participation for that day. We all enjoyed it, and I think the younger students did too. I really enjoyed being able to participate in the student council. It was very fun. It was a very fun experience. If I get the chance, I would love to do it again. Thank you, Ari. And I hope you get a chance again too. It would be a benefit to any group you're part of. So this um, is a slide that shows some pictures of our theme days. So sometimes students change backgrounds, sometimes they wore clothing. They, in one picture, you can see picked up litter for Earth Day, and even our pets got involved on some of the theme days. And Anna Dupuy and her sister Ella designed this Tri-Council Cup. And so we sent it to each class to post in their Google Classroom as they had the most participation in our theme day. And we found that really um, helped classes work together to, um, to show up and participate. And we really liked the unity that that brought to our online academy. It's really a unique opportunity to have kids from all the towns in, in one class in some instances. And so they've, they really connected and build bonds. We just wanted to be a small part of that. So Ari and Riley and Anna had some last thoughts and then we'd be happy to take any questions. We would just like to say thank you to Noble Teachers for persevering through this tough time and still managing to make learning fun. This has been the most fun school year and my favorite school year in my whole entire life. <laughs> Thanks, and we went, want to especially thank Mrs. Dumont for helping us with the student council. I also wanted to thank all of the Noble Teachers for everything you did for us this year. Even when times were hard, you still kept being the amazing teachers you are and kept doing an amazing job teaching us. So we just wanted to thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, girls. It has been a pleasure to work with you, and I hope you can see all of you that are participating. They are quite an impressive bunch of young people and certainly the future leaders of our school and community. So it's been my pleasure to work with them and really the highlight of my week. So thank you. And if you have any questions, we're happy to entertain those. I have a question. I have a comment and a question. Um, so my comment first is I just want to say that I have a senior that's graduating who was involved in student council for many years. And um, it was different every year. I think you guys will probably find that because you started in a year that was different. Um, but I do hope that you continue with it um, because 
you know, as you get older, it'll change and the responsibilities change, but it's, there's always fun, there's always service, there's always a variety of things. So I hope that, I hope you guys stick with student council over the years. And then my question is, um, what do you think was, like without having done this in a non-remote setting, what do you think is a, is, will it be a benefit to having done this remotely? Like, you know, if you were to guess, you know, or, or maybe pretend it's a year or two down the road and you're looking back, what are some of the benefits of doing what you did in a remote setting? I think that a benefit of this, this remote community was, con was connecting through every single class. It was much easier to move along through classes than I think in person. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say something. Bridget has been outstanding in taking over the online learning. We had 300 plus students in the K-5 room and the teachers were phenomenal. The kids were excellent. But if it hadn't been for Bridget, we would be sinking. And uh, Bridget's also taken the lead in the Noble Virtual Middle School. So I appreciate her greatly, and I know the girls also appreciate her. So thank you very much, Bridget, for all you've done. Thank you. Thank like you. I said, it's been my pleasure, and I am extremely proud of these young ladies and all of our student council members, even though they all couldn't be part of this tonight. These girls strongly represent the, kind, the caliber of students we've had. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now you can hang out with us, or you can just go away. It's totally up to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, administrators agree. I think so we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna table that because we have to talk. Well, we're, yeah, so we're going to rearrange the schedule a little bit just so that we can do it in a public session that needs to be in a public session, and then we'll go to executive session. Okay, so that you're. So what are we, what are we tabling? We're tabling um, four, five, we're moving. Five, and six? Yeah. yeah. Four, five, and six. And seven? Yeah, four, five, six, seven. And then, so we've got eight. And okay. what are we tabling these <clears throat> until? Just, we're going to do them in the executive session pieces at the end. Okay. So that you can ask your questions and then we do need to add another um, executive session for personnel. personnel. So does that mean that we come back into public session after the executive session? At the very end. Okay. Yep. Okay. Can, I think we can do our executive sessions and accumulate our knowledge. And then at the end you can come out and do what you need to do for like the agreements. Okay. Okay, is that fair? We were yeah. trying to figure out the best way to do it so it wasn't so clunky back and forth. Um, okay, so the superintendent, summer hire. Do we want to start with that one? So typically, um, I, I'm just trying to find the date. So we did this last, the last No, time. what you did the last time was you were uh, allowing us to do the 5% move. This um, time okay. it was actually allowing the superintendent yeah, to make do the hiring decisions over the summer so that we don't have to call you in. For meeting. Okay. And this is just for teacher hires, yeah. not for administrative hires. Right. And mm -hmm. every year it's so for this year it would be from June 18th, which is the day after school ends, to August 31st. Yeah. Um, so just for teacher hires. Um, Does that include like bus drivers and, or those wouldn't have needed? We don't have right. yeah. yeah. okay. And then so, we do have administrative positions that we need to hire. Um, and we will come, we'll need to have a meeting for those. Yeah, we'll try to come. Okay. Are, are we meeting once in July and once in the, uh, what's the one at? August? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, right? We, that's typical. I mean, last year was unusual, so I, I don't know, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think this year is going to be 100% normal, right. so I would right. certainly plan on that as a minimum. Don't we have a training in July? We do, right. we do. Yeah. So we'll lump we'll, we'll one of those in there. Yeah. So do we just need a motion to give that? Permission? You do. You do. Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we give uh, Audra, the superintendent, the authority to hire any teachers, any educators from June 18th through August 31st. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? And it looks like Rebecca has joined the meeting. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, can we see you so you, or give us a verbal agreement if you're in favor? Yes. Thank you. 
um, employment update? Sure. So we have um, one retirement that we just received this afternoon, and that is for Sharon Easley, who is currently at the middle school, uh, 27 years mm -hmm. um, math. And so she is just stating that um, her mom's health is, is coming up and um, she'd like to spend some more time with her family and her mom and um, loves working with the students still and loves her job and uh, just it's time for that. So that is um, Sharon Easley. And we have to make a motion. Yeah. 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 Is that the only retirement? retirement? That's the only retirement. Okay. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to accept uh, Ms. Eastley's retirement with work I'll second it. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Rebecca? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have two um, resignations. The first one is Heather McDonald, who is currently um, a Spanish teacher at Noble High School. And um, the other one is for Cassie Vizina, who is a speech and language pathologist right now um, in a couple of the schools, but was going to be potentially a HESI school next year. So um, those are the two resignations. And we need a motion to accept those. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation. Second. All in favor? Rebecca? Yes. Thank you. And we are nominating quite a few um, teachers uh, to the board this evening for your approval. The first one is Catherine Brady for Knowlton School Grade 4, and she's coming um, from Biddeford. She's um, a teacher in Biddeford this year. So that's Ka Catherine Brady. Um, Heather Carver, who's also for Knowlton School Grade 4, and she um, is coming from a, cur well, currently she's working in a learning center. Um, in South Berwick, and she's worked a little bit at the Great Work School as well. So that is Heather and Carver. And then we have Elizabeth Brackett, who is currently an educational technician in our district. She is being nominated this evening to work in Knowlton School in special education as a special education teacher. And then we have um, Taylor DuPont, who um, is being nominated for speech at Knowlton School as well. And she is currently um, doing, she's doing some clinician, clinical work right now at Knowlton and Lebanon, mostly in Lebanon. Um, but she will be completed that, so that's the nomination for that position. Uh, Jackie McGarry, who is a longstanding Lebanon educational technician, and she is currently working in our remote academy, and she is being nominated for a halftime interventionist position at the Lebanon Elementary Hanson School next year. And then we have Lisa Bailicki, who is um, currently a math teacher at Burlington Academy, and she is um, being nominated for high school math um, for next year. And then we've got one more here. Kelly Woodhouse, who um, is being nominated for grade eight math. And I'm let you know she's currently. She is currently an intern at Dover Middle School. She worked as a youth development counselor for a coordinator for a few years um, and then got her teaching certificate. So those are the new hires that we're nominating this evening. Did we miss one? The first one? Did I? Yes, you missed Casey. Oh, and you have listed papers. Thank you. I don't have the paperwork, so yes. Yes, we just interviewed her today, so yes. Is that one? Um, she's Huzzy School, second grade. She's coming from South Carolina. She's teaching third grade in South Carolina. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry. Casey? That's Casey's last name. Powdy? P-O-W-D-E-N. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been fast and furious. Mm -hmm. Every day's like three. It yeah, does, but <laughs> she, um, she grew up in this area and moved to get a different experience and this is really Linda's coming back. So mosquitoes. Yeah. yeah. Um can we have a motion to we have to I'm sorry that I never remember what we yeah. had motions for, but yeah. I'll make the motion make the motion accept all those people. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Rebecca? Yes. 
She's so that she waits. <laughs> All right. Is that a firm appointment? Or that is. Okay. Yes. And next meeting we'll probably have the study as well. Yeah. Okay. We're doing well though. I mean, yeah. it's a fast pace, but we're getting some good, you know, some good candidates. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Good. Um, all right, education update. Sure. So we have the NOLA student council as part of that. We wanted to talk a little bit about the educational recovery, which is um, something that we need to do um, as part of as part of our next grant that comes in. They want to dedicate 20% to educational recovery, meaning any kind of loss or any kind of skills that we need to to um, target. Uh, based upon what has happened since last March. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what that's going to look like. Um, do you want to start by talking about special education? I do. Okay. okay. I have to like, I've got to go to my cheat sheet. Okay. okay. Uh, really quick. Because, so for our educational, for, for the um, special education program, they're offering four hours on Thursday. Correct. So this is also um, for anyone interested. Teachers or parent referrals. We set they sent the survey out to all of our um, students, our special ed students' parents. There's about 100 students interested in utilizing the services, so that's great. Um, it's going to look like a typical elementary school day: morning meeting, some academics, some structured so social activities at lunch. Um, it is not IEP driven for the most part. This is just really about pretty much bringing the team back in. I think more than anything, and um, the true educational recovery piece will be. Every single IEP meeting as we go forward, they'll be looking at where are the losses and where are the strengths that we need to, to fit in. So that's how that's going to work out. Um, let's see. So that is special ed. And they'll do that. There's the K-5 folks, elementary-wise, This was they sent out that information. And at the middle school and the high school, they're working based on teacher referrals. So over for the next, over the summer. So they'll be participating as part of the normal middle school and normal high school summer school program. So for um, the elementary schools, North Berwick and Berwick are going to be housed at Huzzy, the, the summer programming at Huzzy in person. In person. Yeah. And some of the educational recovery will not be in person. Some of it will be online. Some of those um, teachers and students, that's the medium that they're choosing, to the platform that they're choosing. Um, so the educational recovery for elementary is going to be academic based, but also some social emotional learning, some second steps, which is one of our programs that we're using for social emotional learning. Um, so working with students in small groups, one on one to build some of those skills, reinforce some of those skills, practice some of those skills. Uh, Lebanon is going to have their own. They don't need to share a building because, you know, we're doing the the, the sprinkling at, in North Harwick, so that's why they're going to Huzzy School. So Lebanon is going to run a very similar program. In addition to that, our normal our normal summer programming, as far as Kindergarten Jumpstart and Boost, is in person at Huzzy and in Lebanon. And um, so that that's that's the elementary school. The middle school program is looking. That's a little different in the sense that. They've incorporated social studies and science, which typically for credit recovery hasn't really happened in the past. It's focused on literacy and math, but they've expanded it. They're looking at the data that we're just taking the NWEA. So they're looking at some of the data from that, and they're making recommendations for students, probably thinking about 100 for that. That's in addition to their other typical, more typical summer programming. We can at some point, it doesn't have to be right now, we'll okay. come this month, but um, see some, some how the test results yes. coming back for yes. kiddos mm -hmm. with different grades and yes, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We're just finishing the assessing for the, the literacy, the reading right. levels right now, but we'll bring that in. Yes. And they had to take the NWEA for the state. That was the state testing this year. So we'll bring all that. Mm -hmm. And Chris, are you there? I'm going to put you right on the spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, just, he just texted me, so he's here okay. somewhere, unless he stepped away after I gave him Okay, so one of the things that we also wanted to touch base on, Denise, I think you asked, that last March we had a lot of questions about internet accessibility for our students. So we talked to Chris a little bit about that. I wasn't sure if he was going to have I actually have a, do you he, have that? I have the info, okay. yeah, I think. 
Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, here he is. Chris, do you want to talk about the um, the hotspot stuff, or do you want me to do it? He's hearing, but I guess he's okay. trying. Oh, oh, you're around. Oh, he had to rejoin the audience. Yeah. You're here. Sorry, Sue, were you looking for me? Yeah. <laughs> do you want to talk about the hotspots information or do you want me to just read it? Oh, no, I can talk about it. Right, um, okay. Yeah, we, we, we were able to, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were able to secure about 75 units as Verizon was quickly selling out of them. And that complemented our existing 30 or so that we already had. And so right from the outset, we had most uh, home access needs met, um, but we did pick up a couple of more over the beginning of the first couple months of the pandemic and then ongoing as folks moved in and out and didn't have coverage. Um, so right now we're, we're just in excess of 100 hotspots and we, we're not aware of anyone who doesn't have one. So um, we feel like we've met the need and we've just recently renegotiated with Verizon uh, to go from $40 a month down to $15 a month with using some new state contracts that are available to us. And uh, that includes unlimited data on the hotspots. Um, in addition, we're finding out um, over the last two weeks, there's been several um, sessions by the FCC and their Emergency Broadband Act uh, and it looks like they are actually going to pick up the tab for those hotspots for the next um, next 12 months. So we'll be applying for that to offset the cost of those. Um, so that's where we currently stand. And um, principals and teachers and families have all been reporting in, you know, this, this family has a need or this, um, you know, letting us know that we need one when we do. Thank you. Sure. Sorry to haul uh, you back in. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. So it looks like our access is pretty good. Yeah, it sounds like it. Not to say that some of our, even still some of them are, in any of our towns, we still have spots where the service isn't great and people have to move around a little bit to find their. So one of the um, reasons that it had been brought up is I guess there's a, um, I don't know if commission is the right word, but there's uh, somebody who's kind of spearheading an effort to make sure that he's specifically doing it on behalf of York County, but really trying to make sure that, you know, that all homes do have access. So they're started, they, but they, it sounds like one of the issues is still trying to identify how many don't. Right. So um, the, it sounds like the hotspot answer gives us exactly what, what yeah. you know, the answer to that. So. Yeah. Yeah. But their goal is, you know, obviously to make it so we don't have to provide hotspots that everybody can have. Right. There is a whole, there's a whole uh, movement to provide um, reliable service throughout the state. Yeah. Um, one of the problems is that because the southern part of the state has so much access, comparatively speaking, to the rest of the state, that um, I think the funding, and I think Chris and I have talked about this, that the funding is really being focused to the to the upper part of the state. And but what does happen is that we have these intermittent places throughout our counties that in the in down yeah. here that are just dead well i think that my understanding was that that's why this yeah. was specifically yeah. it was understanding that yes there are parts of the state that have a lot less yeah. coverage but you know within each county there's still pockets yes. that need to be addressed yeah. 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 okay and that's what we had under the educational states all right all right so we're at your update the only thing i think that we wanted to add is that we did get a number from our school nurses an update on vaccinations and it is increasing so we're we're at about a third of our staff but we're getting more more and more information in as as they're getting the second vaccination so um 
So we'll keep monitoring and looking at that. I think really what's going to happen is in the you know in the fall if we hear that there's a student that if there's a case in the classroom, I think that's going to prompt staff to say, oh no, I've been vaccinated. Here's my card. Right. You know, I think it's going to be up on those moments because that's what's been happening for us. Like the most recent couple of cases at the high school and the middle school, um, our staff have been vaccinated for the most part, and that's when we find out that they are. Right. So. Um, so it's moving, it's moving. Right. Yeah. We're just getting more information right. on a you know, daily basis. Right. And then we we have talked, um, we met with Brenda Cravens for transportation yesterday. I think it was just yesterday. It was just yesterday. Was like um, and we just talked about what busing is going to look like, transportation is going to look like in the fall. And we talked about being able to have two students per seat. Um, and then if there's a child, like if students are in the same daycare, child care, they're going to be able to, to sit in the same seat because that's a cohort in the, in the daycare setting and then they're going to come into school. And if families have three, you know, three students on that bus, they can sit three to a seat for that. So that will certainly give us some more flexibility and we will be sending out some, um, a questionnaire to families about who, you know, who's going to be using transportation again. And, making sure we have all your current updates and information for addresses because that's always a big undertaking in the summer and then if families move and we don't know buses are built runs are built around addresses so the state has said we can put two kids on the seat that's they they have given us guidelines okay. and um not requirements which is good but we'll keep windows open we'll have we have to have the seating charts because if somebody is sick well, sounds right. like that's been uh, helpful it has yes yeah, yeah. yeah. It definitely, the seating charts definitely in the building and in, on the bus has definitely helped us narrow down the amount of students that have needed to, or staff that have needed to quarantine. So that's that. We've heard a little bit of um, information that they are going to continue to diligently look at the six feet for um, eating, um, but we're not sure when that, if, if that's going to change, and if it is going to change, when that's going to happen. So, um, we know that they have the same standards the adults and the rest of the world have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, right, it's, it's true. So, well, right. so, those are the most current updates, but those updates from the state change weekly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I'm hearing a little bit that um, the main principals association may be changing some of the um, summer guidelines for athletics, but we haven't heard specifically what that is, but we'll look at those and incorporate those into our summer programming when we get that information. All right. Anything else, Sue? No. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, do you want to do other before we go into all of the executive sessions? Yeah, I, have, I just have a couple of sure. others. Um, sure. I don't know if anyone else says. Um, just two things before we were live on this call, we we're talking a little bit about the um, double um, adult and continuing education graduation that um, just happened before this meeting and a few of us were able to attend. Um, I would, it was very moving and very impressive. 12 students, I believe it was 12 students graduated um, with a, a pretty wide variety of experiences and um, there's no question that uh, the amount of uh, the amount that they had to overcome the amount of strength that it took uh, was just you know very impressive and I would say to any board member if you get the opportunity which we do because we're about it to attend a graduation next year or the year after um, I would Highly recommend it. Um, it's it's just a um, actually one of the first things that they did was actually thank the board and administration for really the financial support of that entire kind of operation. And that certainly was not what it was about for me. But it, it is um, there's a lot of appreciation for the funding to put these programs mm -hmm. on. But um, mostly it was just, um, it's just a real, you know, a deep reminder of, you know, what, what students of all ages, um, what paths they take and uh, what hurdles they might have to 
jump over to get to where they are. So um, it was super impressive. And um, yeah, if you if you get an opportunity, I would definitely um, definitely do it. And then um, the uh, the only other other I have is not we don't even have to discuss it. It was sort of more just because we're gonna probably within a couple of meetings going to be there and we're gonna have some change on the board. Um, but I know in the past we've talked about <laughs> setting up, I think every year we talk about setting up a sort of new board member mentorship and then I'm not entirely sure we ever do anything. Um, but I definitely would, I guess I would just kind of say for people that are not leaving the board, maybe be thinking about how we can help new board members. Uh, and then I think specifically maybe people that are a bit newer, if you have anything in particular, what you wish you knew or what would have been helpful um, to pass that along. But um, I, I think that, I think it's really important and I, I think we all agree it's important, but then everything gets in the way and it's hard to actually act on it. So I just want people to be thinking People who are not leaving the board to be thinking about how we can, you know, provide support for new board members, especially as they're coming in at a strange time. You can think about it too, George. I was going to say, you can stay as a mentor. Oh, well, yes, no, 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 no. Everybody can think about it. It was more just. That's what we do. We, we you don't actually, you don't actually have to do anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I just kind of wanted to plant that seed for everybody to think about because, again, it's a world a couple meetings away from meeting new cases and it sounds like we've got um you guys for one more meeting maybe actually the election is tuesday yeah so this is so be so longer. sue seems to think you're in it for one more meeting well i hope <laughs> for one more meeting. at least for a short for you guys show up on the 17th i'm sorry okay well, you, can leave, <laughs> you can leave before it's over but you have to be there for a little bit okay Thank you. Um, anyway, that was, those were my others, so I don't know if anyone else has. I have, well, one other, well, two, I think you guys just discussed it, but I couldn't quite hear, but recognizing the board members that are leaving, because mm -hmm. is their last meeting, I believe? Well, they just, they're coming in next, at the next, the start of the next meeting, yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, did I miss something about uh, Audra's review? I thought we were supposed to do that sometime around this time. We extended it to this time frame. I could be wrong, but where are we at with that? We've been talking about it, so it's um, for Audra's oh, review. Yeah, yeah I've got it. You guys have to do it at some point here. <laughs> I want to not today, but uh, you can. No, I can't. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Anyway, we could. We have a, I think we've got a document that um, uh, Arthur's going to share with Denise and then let her be the, the woman who does the. Yeah. Are we, t are we talking about this now? We can talk about it because it is a case. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Travis, we'll talk about that in executive session. Okay. Any other others? Yeah, just something to look at for the future as far as um, what you guys are talking yeah. about for the, getting everybody aligned and coming in next year. Do we have anything, are you guys looking at anything for just the general student body as far as mental health and um, any sort of plans when they come back in? For the students, yeah. because we've got some plans for staff as well. Yeah. Um, but for the students, we're certainly picking back up um, on the second steps that we're doing. We're looking at, um, you know, how we had that position in Lebanon mm -hmm. that we had cut out and we said we would add um, using some of our funding that we're having. So that's happening as well. So we're going to increase some um, positions there. We're looking at across the district other positions if we need them in different spaces for that. Um, we're going to be running some um, workshops for parents from Lynn Lyons who we've had a couple was it a couple years ago? Two yeah, three years ago. Two years ago. And she talks a lot about um, just anxiety and um, kind of how to help with that across the board. Our teachers went, attended and uh, text attended, and anybody that wanted to could attend a couple years ago when we had her. She came in and talked to the high school students. Yeah. 
Um, so we're having a couple of sessions with her. Um, what, what is the what is the one that is this? It's in a month or so. Um, I think it, I don't know if it was just for high school students or seniors, but it was. A, I'm trying to find it right now. Um, a, a young man who's speaking to the students, but then there was like a parent part of it. It was. He got me on this one. I'm okay. not sure. I got an email. I'll find okay. it. Okay. But it was it was definitely it was all, through it was through the high school. I think. Yeah. Right? It yeah. was. Um, it looks understand. like it's specifically for seniors, but it is uh, John Cross. Um, anyway, it's yeah. it is definitely around sort of the mental health, but at the point of you know the kids kind of going out into the world, especially after this challenging time. And Lynn Lyons was very well received by staff and by parents. Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're hitting it from many angles. That's our goal, right? To try to, and then to see as kids are coming back in, where the where the big issues are rising up. Yeah. Because we'll see them very quickly, I think. That conference that we attended last year, they, they uh, emailed me something about a playbook, and I, I meant to take a look at that at some point when we slow down a little bit just to see. Um, but I thought that was interesting that people are, you know, right. doing structured things. And the elementary schools piloted, it's called the DESA, D E S S A. And so it's kind of like a screening tool that just kind of looks at, at some of those higher, um, you know, higher on the radar kind of emotional things for students. So they're using that so we can certainly bring in some information to see how that was as a tool. Is that a great screening tool? What kinds of things did that lead to in the classroom? How did that, you know, how did that help support students and staff? So we can certainly look at that as well. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay. Okay. Any other others? And is there, if there's no other public input? Um, uh, hold on, and refresh. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think we're not adjourning, but we do need to have somebody make a motion to go into executive session. And I, I am so Travis, we're gonna, we're gonna hang up this call. And we're going to, this is what Chris told me to do. <laughs> and we're going to go into our executive session. Um, so you can just jump on your computer if you want to. And then we'll come back. He's going to leave the live stream going, but it's going to be quiet, honestly. And then when we go back in, we'll just pick up where we left off. So we'll just I'll go back into the call. And okay. that's for Rebecca as well. Yeah, so yeah, Rebecca and Travis, we're going to go on to our executive session. Link. Well, hold on, we have to make the motion first. Yep, I'm waiting. That. Who would like to make the motion? I make the motion. I move to executive session. No second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'm hanging out. Chris, are you here? I'm still here, and this one's still live. Okay, we should be going back shortly, I think. All right.
think I got it. Don't scare me. Yeah. Sorry, we got lost. Yeah. Denise, are you really still there? No. I'm here. Uh, uh, no, we're back Okay. All right. Are we ready? We're ready. Okay. I make a motion that we approve MRSA 4056A administrator's agreement, the teacher's agreement, and the compensation for the central office administration. And I'll second that. I have a comment. Yeah. Um, do we need to include that we amended the administrative one for? Uh, oh no, that's seven. It's a contract. Denise. Well, that was uh, that was. I think you're right. Because because that's here we've we've lumped together the. Oh, the Yeah. Yeah. This is okay. So we could maybe just do the other. Do we do the two together? Yeah. As amended. Okay. So could, so the motion would just be for administrators, teachers, and contract of the assistant superintendent. Okay. And that's it. This is managed. No, because we were going to make. So that changes. Oh. Yeah. I'll do it again. Oh, okay. Forget that. First right. question. Okay. I hope that we approve the um, administrator's agreement, the teacher's agreement, and the assistant superintendent's contract. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Rebecca? Aye. Thank All you. Right. She's coming. So then, do we have to actually? Send this back to them, or are we just making Denise sweat? I think you can. Denise, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> don't sweat. Don't worry. I'm going to say I'm So, you want to do the um, business manager as amended? Okay. Never? Right. I make a motion that we approve the business manager's contract as amended. I'll second that. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Oh, there you go. Rebecca just did it. Good. Okay. All right. It's nice that everybody's here tonight. Yeah. All right. Just motion to Oh, no. Actually, before we do that, I just want to say oh. uh, um, for all the people listening, a special thank you to Estrita and Joanne and maybe Linda. Um, yeah. And uh, but also just especially for the how many years? 18, 18, 18, years. 18 years for Joanne Potter. So um, so I know that it's not official and that you can't be here officially on the 17th, but we actually would like you to attend at least for the first 15, 15 minutes on the first on the 17th, if possible, as we were not prepared for this to be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> I will drag you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Seven Thank you. All right. And on that note, I'll make a motion to return. Yes, you oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Rebecca? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca, for hanging in there. Thanks, Travis. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.